Hi brothers and sisters in Christ. Now each time my two-year-old crosses the road to get to the playground opposite our place, I make sure that I hold her hand. Now why do I do that? So that she is restrained from any potential danger in the form of oncoming vehicles or maybe even stray dogs. The same with how her hand is held when she climbs up or heads down the staircase. Why? So that if she trips, I restrain her from falling down the stairs. I have been thinking a, a lot about the word restrain. Now, 1 Samuel chapters 1 to 3 highlights to us as a rather sad story of Eli and his two sons. Now, in contemporary language, the story of Eli paints a picture to us of a father in full time service unto the Lord who failed to lead and parent his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. That allowed them to turn into repulsive and rebellious men that became the talk of the town. These two sons had no regard for the Lord and would commit acts within the church compounds that dishonored the Lord. Now, years later, both sons died before their elderly father did. And not long after, Eli ended up dead too after falling backwards off his chair, breaking his neck. Now, 1 Samuel 3.13 reads, For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about, his sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. He failed to restrain them. Now, friends, the Word of God says that Eli failed to restrain his sons, having been made aware of their wrongs. What does restrain actually mean? The NLT translation uses the word discipline. Now, I would like to offer us three points about restrain in light of the gospel and the Father's love for us. Point number one. Restraint and love must go together. Restraint apart from love leads to legalism. Now Proverbs 3, 11 to 12 says this, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Now we cannot say that we love our children when we are not fully present with them. And all they hear from us when we are present with them is, don't do that, or I'm warning you. Now remember how caught up with ministry work matters I can be and my youngest kept asking, Daddy, come play puzzle with me, come play puzzle with me. I was about to tell her, Daddy has to work now. When Holy Spirit convicted me to drop my work and simply be present with her, looking into her delightful face and, and just enjoying that time with her and the puzzle. Point number two, restraint is never a one-time action. Now what's interesting to note is that Eli did highlight to his sons their wrongs and rebuke them some, but his failure to restrain them was still counted against him. Now I'm not talking about nagging here, but a constant and consistent engagement with our children about what is honouring and what is displeasing to the Lord. It is not a one-time thing. I've said it before and you ought to have learned by now thing. The Shema itself in Deuteronomy 6 was recited by the Jews twice a day. Now, parents, we have the responsibility and privilege to say it again and again and again. But from a place of deepening relationship with our children, motivated by the righteousness of God and not ours. This brings me to my third and final point. Restraint trains us towards godliness. Now in John 21 verse 18, Jesus pointed this truth out to Peter, saying this to him, When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Now growth towards Christ-likeness cannot happen without restraint. We all need better habits and boundaries in our lives that allows us to live truly free in Christ, like Christ. Friends, do you feel restrained in your life right now? It could be God's way of turning your heart back to Him and His ways, making you more like Jesus. Now I close by bringing us back to the picture of hand-holding restraint, a father holding his very young daughter's hand while crossing the road. She does not resist restraint because of the knowledge that her father loves her, sees things better, is out to protect her, and to get her safely onto the other side. That's our God. Let us pray. Father, what a privilege it is to call you Abba Father. 
knowing that you truly care for us, to grant us needed restraints in our lives so that we can experience the true abundant life found only in you. That's who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.